the shadows Step out of the grave Break into the wild And don't be afraid We run into wide open spaces Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting spare The Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom There is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom There is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love Oh, the Spirit is here Burdens bring all of the scars. Come back to communion. Come back to the star. And run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. And there's like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, the hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, the hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name.
said not to hardly hear me for his crime. This is all true. No Christ to reigns in glory, longs to comfort you. Everybody. Welcome to Cyprus Online. We are so glad that you are with us this morning. I'd like to ask you to go ahead and comment in the chat window where you're watching from and who you're watching with. If you're watching on our website, there's a couple of additional buttons to draw your attention to. Uh, there's the Bible button where you can reference the scripture that's being utilized today in our service. And there's also the prayer button where you can submit a prayer request and even pray today with a live host. And if this is your first time with us today, welcome. We're so glad that you've decided to check us out this morning and we trust that you've enjoyed your visit so far. We'd like to ask you to take the next step and complete a digital connect card so we can reach out, introduce ourselves and get to know you a little bit better. When you do that, we'll make a donation to a local food pantry on your behalf. You'll find a link to the connection card in the chat window now. Hey kids, I really hope you're able to join me on Friday, February 12th for our virtual family movie night. In honor of Valentine's Day, we will be watching Lady and the Tramp at 6.30 on Zoom. I hope your whole family can join us. And there's a couple of ways you can connect with me each week. Every Sunday at 11 o'clock on Zoom, I'm still meeting with kids to do some fun activities, games, and worship. And every Sunday on the lawn at 9.15, you can find me on the playground with a fun and safe craft activity. I hope to see you there. 
And as always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Cypress Meadows Kids, where I will post weekly parent cues, the monthly memory verses, and more. Thanks, Brooke. And students and parents of students, tonight is our Super Bowl party, but there's been a change of venue. We were originally going to do it outside at our house, but because of the threat of rain and thunderstorms, we're going to move it to church and watch it in Studio 412. We'll have the game on all the TVs. Um, it's tonight from 6 o'clock, so parents, you can get home for kickoff until 8.30 or halftime, whichever comes first, um, so you can make it home for the second half. There's going to be food and drinks, and we're going to be hanging out and watching the game. Make sure you wear your gear and go Bucks. We'll see you tonight. As you can tell, there's a lot going on around Cyprus and adults. We haven't left you out. We've got Taylor's Habits of Jesus class coming up, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. So you've still got time to plan and be a part of that. As well, Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night, there's cafe night. And you should check that out if you haven't already. Then every Sunday morning during the 9.15 hour, we've got Sunday on the lawn services. That's this service live and in person on our front lawn at the church. It's socially distanced. It's masked, except we do have safety circles and tables where if you're sitting uh, inside your circle, if you're sitting at your table, you can take your mask off and enjoy the fresh air. Uh, but all together, we're worshiping and enjoying our, our time and community. So you should check that out. For more information about these events and more, you can text the word events to 727 291 4491. Now, as we get ready to continue in our service today, I do want to make one more mention of the new Cyprus original devotion that you could be a part of. Some of you already signed up for it. Many of you have begun receiving it this week. Uh, it's called The Daily, and that's because you receive it in your text box every day. All you've got to do is text the word daily to 727 291 4491, and you can begin receiving that one tomorrow. Uh, if you've signed up to receive it, but for some reason it hasn't made it to your inbox, would you please text us, call us, email us, or even grab us uh, there at Sunday on the Lawn next week and let us know that you haven't. That way we can fix whatever's wrong with it and make sure that you're getting that daily devotion. We really believe in this, and we think it's going to be an incredible encouragement to your life every day of this year. In Cyprus, there are still five easy ways to continue to give. You can text giving to 727 291 4491. You can visit cypressmeadows.org slash giving. You can drop your offering in the mail. You can swing by during the week and drop it off to us here at the church. Or you can come out to Sunday on the Lawn and you can give in person. Now it's time to continue in this week's service. Let's get ready to listen to Douglas. Uh, welcome to Cypress Online and welcome to part two of a series we're doing called Foolproof Me. And I want to begin today by talking about this thing called uh, stupid tax. And uh, stupid tax is defined as uh, the price we pay for our own foolishness. And I'm not too proud uh, to admit, you know, I've paid uh, some stupid tax over the years. The other day I was telling uh, somebody about some stupid tax that I came so close to paying, it felt like I paid it. And it kind of uh, uh, scared me enough to straighten me out, I guess I'll say it that way. Um, and some of you have heard this. Uh, back when I was in college, I went to school in Minnesota, and a beautiful little campus just outside the Twin Cities located on a, a lake. And so every winter when the lake froze, there was like this macho contest among all of us guys of who was going to be the first to drive their car on the lake, because whoever was the first kind of became the macho king for the, for the year. And so one year, I remember my roommate and I uh, had left the campus, gone off to do something. But anyway, we were driving back, and we looked out, and we saw the lake was frozen. And he looked over at me, and he said, you wanna? I'm like, yeah, you know, let's do this. And so he took his Pontiac GTO and just flew out onto the lake, no easing on, just flew out, ramped it up 50, 60, almost 70 miles an hour, cranked the wheel, and then we just began spinning in circles across the lake. And then we were high-fiving each other and uh, celebrating how macho we were and how fun this was. And so we drove around for 20, 30 minutes, went back to the campus. And I got, oh, man, uh, I started dating this new girl named Jackie. I'll bet this would really impress her. So I gave her a call. I asked she wanted to go for a drive. And then got her in my car, uh, my uh, heavy Chevy uh, Malibu, and uh, started doing the same, spinning these donuts across the lake, having so much fun. And then I noticed my roommate came back on the lake, spinning, and then we finally met out in the middle of the lake, uh, rolled down our windows to kind of talk and celebrate how macho we are and how fun this was. And as we rolled down our windows and we're talking, there was this huge crack across the lake that sounded like 
a rifle had gone off in our ears and we noticed all this water starting to bubble up between us. And uh, so we both panicked. He took off one way and I, I took another and uh, we safely got off the lake. And then we get back to the campus, of course, we're telling how uh, awesome we are and we were spinning and uh, there was a big crack and water started bubbling and, and were you afraid? No. But then later that night, when I'm lying in bed, looking up at the ceiling and realizing what could have happened, uh, I, I had these thoughts of, oh my goodness, I just about took the life of this wonderful young woman I've just met. I imagined a phone call being made to her parents, a phone call being made to my parents. And when I began thinking about the consequences of what we'd done, it's like, oh my goodness, what was I thinking. Well, anyway, uh, all of us, every single one of us have faced some stupid attacks somewhere along the line in our lives. We look back over the history of our lives. Uh, we, some of us, we wish we'd handled our finances differently than we did. We wish there were certain invitations or opportunities uh, that we had declined instead of accepting. We wish there were certain papers we hadn't signed. Uh, we wish there were certain things that we hadn't perhaps bought jobs we hadn't taken, or moves that we hadn't made. And looking back, we find ourselves asking that question, what was I thinking? What was I thinking in this moment? Because there was a price to pay in those moments. And so, like me, I'm quite sure that you know, none of us want to pay any more stupid tax going forward with our lives. And so last week, we looked at a question, a question if we honestly answer it, ask it, and then answer it honestly, it has the potential to just about foolproof our lives. And this question comes from wise Solomon, and it's simply this. What's the wise thing to do? Uh, in, in light of my past experiences, my current realities, and my future aspirations, what's the wise thing to do right here? And Solomon, in his book of wisdom, he says it like this, Proverbs 28, verse 26. Those who trust in themselves are fools. But those who walk in wisdom are safe. So a great question that flows out of this. What's the wise thing to do? But the issue is this. Most of us don't ask that question. We don't ask that question because we know the answer to that question. And we don't want that answer. And so we start asking all kinds of other questions instead of what's the wise thing to do. So we'll start asking, uh, so like, where's the line and how close can I get to it before I cross over? Uh, how far can I dance in the gray area before it becomes a dark area? Um, is it consensual? Is it legal? Is there a Bible verse that speaks like directly against it? Because if not, I think I'm good. Uh, we ask, will the bank loan me the, uh, the, loan me the money on this? Uh, what feels good to me in this moment? And so we ask all these other questions, and because we ask the wrong questions, we keep getting the wrong answers, and we keep paying stupid tax over and over and over again. So, um, wise Solomon, uh, he says in his book of wisdom uh, that, that when people hear his wisdom, like what's the wise thing to do, he says there, there's four different responses you can expect from people uh, when, when they, they hear this wisdom. And the first response, he says, kind of rolls out like this. Thanks, but I'm quite sure it's going to work out. You might just be overstating, being a little bit dramatic here on this. I mean, it's not like anybody went bankrupt, or it's not like anybody got pregnant. It'll work out. A second response, Solomon says, when people hear his wisdom, is people will say this. Okay, so maybe what I'm thinking about doing isn't the wisest thing, but it's not exactly unwise either. Um, Solomon says, you know what? This person says, you know what, let me make my own mistakes. If there's a price to pay, I'll pay it. Know anybody like that? All right, and then the third response, Solomon says, that people make to his wisdom, people will say this, hey, mind your own business. <laughs> uh, listen, you take care of you, and I'll take care of me. All right, got it? And then Solomon says, uh, the person who has this response, it's not enough uh, for this person to feel this way. Somehow they feel it's absolutely necessary to tell somebody a lot of somebody's um, because they have an opinion and they need to be heard. 
And it's got to be heard in person and all over, all over social media. And then the fourth response Solomon says to his wisdom when he gives it is there will be those who will hear his wisdom and who will say, okay, let me, I, I, let me hear some more. I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm always willing to get a little more insight into my life or to gain a little more advantage. So, so, so talk to me. I, I, I at least want to hear this. Four different responses to, to the wisdom that Solomon has to offer. And then Solomon actually gives names to each of these responses. He names them the simple, the fool, the mocker, and the wise. All right, so we're going to unpack this here together because we've just got some wisdom from Solomon, this wisdom of asking this question, what's the wise thing to do? And so Solomon tells us about the fate of each of these responses. And let's begin now with, with the simple. And um, by the way, simple is not a very nice word or a very nice thing to be called in our culture anyway. Um, we kind of look at it as an insult, but what Solomon is saying is he's using simple to refer to the word naive, and not, not naive because of lack of brain cells, but, but naive because of a lack of experience. Uh, think somebody who is um, a novice or who is a beginner in a new area. So like if, you know, if you're 17, uh, you don't have a whole lot of life I experience, so it's not really being used as a put down. And what makes... What makes a person simple, Solomon says, is, is this. That even though they've not had any experience in this or that area, they, um, they really believe they can just figure it out on their own. And so they really don't need some dad or some mom, and certainly not some pastor, telling them how to live their lives. Which is why, which is why college freshmen always receive, receive an onslaught of credit card applications. Uh, because they've not experienced what it's like to be $15,000 in debt to credit cards. They've not experienced what it's like uh, to have some bill collector calling them day after day after day. They've not experienced what it's like uh, to declare bankruptcy. And so the credit card companies know, since these folks haven't experienced this, they can promise them, enjoy life now. And they've not lived long enough to know how much you're going to pay for it later with all of this. But, but some of you and some of us, we've lived long enough to know, uh, because we have some life experience under our belts, we live long enough to know, I mean, we don't have to travel this road again <laughs> to know what it's like to have to get a second job in order to make ends meet. Or in other areas of life, you know, we don't have to travel roads again to, to know what it's like um, to, to stare into the eyes of some, of some kid and to tell them that, you know, that dad and mom are getting a divorce and going separate ways. Uh, they, you know what it's like to, to get that phone call and have somebody say, you know, the test came back and the dot was blue. Some of us have been there, done that, got the t-shirt in this whole process, and we, we know enough now to know you can spare yourself so much heartache and so much pain, and you can preserve your future by just simply asking this question, What's the wise thing to do? And so Solomon says this about the simple. The people who seek saying, it'll work out, it'll work out. Solomon says in Proverbs 22, verse 3, he says, the prudent see danger and take refuge. But the simple, they just keep going. And then they pay the penalty. Stupid tax. All right, let's move on uh, to the fool. And the fool is a person who says, I know, but. They'll say, um, I, I know it's a little bit sketchy, but. I, I know it's not like exactly I, I, I ideal either, uh, but. I, I know I should drop a few pounds. I know I should get the family back in church. I, I know I should be saving some things for the future, but I'll figure it out. It'll, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. And Solomon says this in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. <laughs> about the fool. He says, the way of a fool seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. And the irony is this. The fool doesn't learn the first time around, or the second time around, or even the third time around. They just keep traveling and traveling this, this cycle of pain in their lives. And Solomon describes it like this in a very graphic way. 
Proverbs 26, verse 11. He says, as a dog returns to its vomit, and that's pretty graphic imagery, isn't it? I remember we had a dog, Sam, at one time in our lives, and where Sam lost his lunch and then returned to it. And I remember he was like, oh, oh. Solomon says this imagery, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats their folly. Wait, wait, wait. She's going back to him again? Really? Scripture says this, which is interesting. You can't warn a fool. You can't educate a fool. That it's only when a fool gets just absolutely smacked and smacked hard by consequences in life do they change. These are the folks who have to learn things the hard way. And the real kicker is this. Scripture says that a companion of fools suffer. So what Scripture is saying to us, it's, it's, not just, uh, it's not just dad and mom who suffer, but it's every single kid in that household. And it's not just the foolish CEO of a company who suffers, it's every single employee in the company. And it's not just the foolish leader who suffers, it's every single person who's under their leadership. They all suffer. So the next response... Solomon talks about when people hear his wisdom, he calls them the mocker or, the, or the, the, the scoffer. And this is a really interesting one. The mocker and the scoffer, uh, this is this person who's sort of a, an absolute know-it-all. And they are so critical of anybody else who would tell them otherwise. And so if, if you disagree with them, they, their first mode is they will immediately criticize you, criticize your beliefs, your decisions, your understanding of things, and then, then they shift into mocking. And they will, will mock you by putting a derogatory label on you, uh, offering insults of one kind or another, and then judge you as being a little bit brainwashed and stupid. They want to tell you how to live your life, where you are wrong, and what you should do. And by the way, if you work for or you live with, or you're under the leadership of a mocker, it's miserable, just miserable. And so Solomon says this, if you dare to correct a mocker, they will spite you for it. If you, if you dare to prove a mocker wrong, they'll hate you for it. And so when things go wrong, uh, it's somebody else's fault. And it's blame, 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 but no taking responsibility. And wherever they go, Solomon says, there's, there's strife and there's quarrels and there's insults. And they're always looking for some platform where they can tell the world their, their opinion of why everybody else is wrong. And in Solomon is wisdom. And Proverbs 22, verse 10 says this, and this is so telling. He says, Drive out the mocker, and out goes strife, quarrels, and insults are ended. The fourth response Solomon says people will have uh, is the response of the wise. And we're going to talk about this in the next couple of weeks, so, but I want, to, I want to close with this. Solomon says, if you take the response of, of the simple or of the fool, uh, or of the mocker, he says, you're going to pay stupid tax for it. Because the day is going to come when the wheels are going to fall off. The day is going to come when you're going to find yourself asking, how do I unscramble these eggs? The, the day comes when you're going to pay a price you don't want to pay for your response to wisdom, for failing to respond to wisdom. So I'm going to ask you just to listen to this warning from Solomon. It comes in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. And so Solomon says to, to the simple, to the fool, and to the mocker, you are going to pay stupid tax for the way you're responding to wisdom. All right, beginning in verse number uh, 20, Solomon says this. This is the rebuke of wisdom. He says, Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out at the city gate. She makes her speech. So Solomon says this, Wisdom, it's available. 
It's always available, and it's, and it's speaking. Verse 22, How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, that is, you're bringing this upon yourself. You're ignoring what wisdom says. Verse 26, so when this happens, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you. That is, you're going to pay stupid tax for your response to wisdom. Verse 28, he says, And then, when they're paying stupid tax, then they will call out to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Since they would not accept my advice and spurn my review, so they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. That is, you will reap what you sow. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them. It'll work out. It'll work out. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. I, I know, but, you know, let, let me learn the hard way. But, Solomon makes this promise. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. So the next two weeks, we're going to dig around and find out how to find wisdom, how to respond to wisdom with wisdom. But I just want to close by saying this. I want to ask you, what's your response? What's your response to wisdom? Because some of us are, are standing at some crossroads relationally, financially, our career, spiritually, relationally, in life. And we want to get it right. We want to head in the right direction. And wisdom is crying aloud in the streets. And so what is the wise thing to do at this moment where you're standing? How are you going to RSVP to wisdom in this moment? You're going to take the response of the simple? It'll work out. It'll work out. Even though you don't have any, maybe much experience in this area and think you don't need to listen to somebody else, you're going to respond like a fool. I know, but. And you're rationalizing, you're excusing, uh, you want to learn the hard way. Or you're going to respond like, like the mocker and just be critical and make fun, and go after, or like the wise. The wise who apply wisdom to their life, who not only ask, what is the wise thing to do? They do it. You see, it really is your choice how you respond. It is your decision. You decide. But then you live with the consequences of your decision. So back to Solomon's question. What's the wise thing to do? So I'm going to close with a prayer, a prayer we've been praying uh, a lot over the last several weeks. This simple prayer of, of God, grant me the wisdom to know what to do and the courage to do it. So let me pray this. Oh God, again we offer this prayer to you. Would you grant to us the wisdom to know what to do and then the courage to do it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Cyprus, God bless you, and uh, go Bucks, huh? Go Bucks. <laughs>